Today, uh, we are going to talk about OSC, which is an acronym for Open Sound Control. Uh, open Sound Control is a, a protocol that was uh, developed in the 90s and I think uh, released in the early 2000s uh, at uh, UC Berkeley by Matthew Wright and Adrian Fried and others. And uh, just to give you a very quick introduction to what it is, it's an open, efficient, transport independent message based protocol developed for communication among computers, sound synthesizers, and other multimedia devices. So it exists to serve the same general purpose as MIDI, but it is meant to overcome uh, various shortcomings um, of MIDI. So um, faster, more flexible, uh, piggybacks on modern networking protocols and, and things like that. So uh, Super Collider is in fact a really great environment to play around with OSC because it is very deeply ingrained into how Super Collider works. Uh, in fact, every time you do anything in the language which results in something happening on the audio server, you have implicitly created one or more OSC messages and sent them from the language to the server. Sometimes the server sends OSC back to the language. And uh, you can also use OSC to send messages from uh, the language of SuperCollider running on one computer to another computer, where it can be sent to the language or the server. So all of these entities, the language, the server, different computers, uh, devices like that, are just viewed as sources and destinations on an OSC network. And you can freely send information back and forth. Uh, so, uh, I guess to start, um, let's talk about what the code is in front of me here. I have a buffer, a buffer playing synth def, and the buffer is uh, me smacking the end of a PVC pipe. And you can transpose it and do all sorts of fun, yeah, it's a great sound, right? Do all sorts of fun stuff to it. Uh, all right. And there's a couple of... Uh, help files that you might be interested in reading. Uh, there's a guide file in particular called OSC Communication, and this kind of walks through the, the protocol, how it works, how it's implemented in SuperCollider. Uh, let me start with um, a really simple example. Let's make a, an instance of the default synth, like this. And we're used to doing stuff like this, where we say, let's make a synth, let's store it in a language side variable, and then we can talk to it and do things like set the frequency to something else. Right, basic stuff. Uh, behind the scenes, what's happening here is uh, the language is sending OSC to the server. And we can, we can do the same sort of thing by sending an OSC message directly to the server. So let's, let's back up a second and talk about the structure of an OSC message. Uh, OSC messages exist, uh, they, they begin with an, uh, a, like a, a, a URL style address. So it's, it starts with a slash and then something slash something. You know, it's, it could be really whatever you want. Uh, if we look at server command reference, this is another guide file, or it's a reference file technically, which talks about the different uh, OSC addresses that the server recognizes, like status. Query the status. And the server responds by sending an OSC message back to the language with the address uh, status reply. Um, there's uh, these various n underscore. See, yeah, here's one. So n free, free a node. And run, this will pause or unpause a node. And set, this is the equivalent to a set message. So it's going to look something like this. Uh, I think um, I think this is s underscore new, which is a address that says make a new synth, and then we have to provide some information. Should be emphasized here that this is a tedious and kind of dumb way of doing it. We have these language side encapsulations of server objects like synth and and all these things, which makes it much easier. But just to kind of demonstrate that what we're really doing is sending OSC, uh, we are going to assign uh, so we, we have to say the um, first we need to provide the synth def name, so that's default. 
And then a synth ID, we're just going to give it a random number, 3456. Normally this is handled automatically. An add action, uh, a target ID, the, um, the default group has an ID of one. So we'll use that. And uh, I think then we can give it additional arguments, but let's, let's see if this works. And it does. And we can look at the node tree now, and we have created an instance of the default synth, and its node ID is 3456. Now we can set its frequency like this. The type of message is n underscore set. The argument is going to be freak, and the value is going to be 800. Oh, I, you know what? I didn't tell it which node ID it is. So we need to say 3456. There we go. And which node to set. Uh, we could also now fade out the envelope by doing this. And similarly, we can just say uh, free. And for that, we don't need any arguments. We just need to say free this node. So we do this. And just to also demonstrate n run, that is a pausing and unpausing thing. Simply pausing sample calculation, and then we can free it anyway. This is a, you know, not at all obvious what we're doing here. Things like s new and set, who knows what those mean? So we're more accustomed to this, but it's good to know what's happening under the hood. The name of this this one here, the name of this file is server command reference. Yeah. So now what I'd like to do is uh, just kind of kind of look at a different face of this OSC cube. I'm going to uh, make. Uh, an object that represents the supercluttered language running on my computer uh, to, to make an entity to which we can send uh, OSC messages. And the class we use for this is net address, N-E-T-A-D-D-R. And to make a new net address, we simply provide the host name, which is the IP address as a string, and the port. So here again, we should back up another step or two and just talk about OSC again in general. Uh, in order to send OSC to a device, you need to know the local IP address of that device, and you also need to know the port on which it's listening. You can sort of imagine OSC ports or network ports as like just a wall full of jacks, right? And so you're on one side and someone else is on the other side, and you just have to make sure you're both plugged into the same jack, otherwise information doesn't get through. And lots of programs have like a default port that they listen on, but it's almost always configurable. Uh, so my IP address, I can always use the, if I want to send OSC to myself, there's a convenience IP address, which is 127.0.0.1. That's the loopback IP address. It just refers to me, myself. So everyone, you can use that and you can send OSC to yourself, but it's just a convenience, way, a convenience of not having to look up your own IP address. But I'm going to look up my own IP address anyway. So I'm on Illinois Net, and my IP address is 10.193.51.47. And um, this is how I know how to look up my IP address. I think there's other ways. You can go into the terminal or the command line and type some commands there or something like that, like ipconfig or ifconfig. Uh, if you need help finding your IP address, you know, just let me know. Uh, so 10.193. So I'm going to say uh, me equals, well, I'll say Eli. So what is it, 10, 193, 51, 47. And then the port uh, on which uh, my instance of the supercollider language is listening. And this defaults to uh, 57120. But you can check this by saying net address dot line port. And so that's, that's my port. And probably all of you are using the same port as well. So there we go, that's me. That's uh, my computer and the super collider language running on this computer. So that's, uh, this is now a, a thing we can send OSC messages to. So I could say Eli 
dot send message, and then you know, a, you know something slash. This is my OSC address. Uh, five. Right. There we go. I've just sent myself an OSC message with the address something and the number five, and I can put other things here if I want. Now I think this has to. Mm, Maybe this has to be, does this work? I think maybe it has to be in an array. No, it doesn't like that. What did I do wrong here? I don't know if I've seen this before. Well, uh, let's try this one more time. Can't assign requested address. It's always when I'm actually teaching, things start to go wrong. Yeah, what's happening here is it's doing the same thing. Hello. I'm kind of stumped here. <laughs> Is it the wrong kind of slash? The numbers after them are just um, the parameters for that OSC message, right? Can you say that again? The numbers or whatever you're putting after the, the string is just the parameters for that OSC message. Yeah, it's just a random, nothing's even listening. I'm just sending OSC messages to myself and, and uh, I... What does this message mean? Okay, just make another one here. I just want to send yeah something strange is happening well let's just move on and maybe we'll figure it out as we go what I'm going to do now is, is create a an object which is uh, which receives OSC and and we did something very similar when we were talking about MIDI with the MIDI def object we can get a MIDI def to respond to a certain type of MIDI message and then execute a function in response. Uh, and there's a very similar object, which is OSC def. So an OSC def takes a symbol, which uniquely identifies it, and then a function. And we can pass, uh, I think, a bunch of different things in here, but I'm just going to pass the message, and then we'll say message.postln. And we need to tell this OSC def what message address to be listening for. So we'll say, uh, we'll say uh, test. So we've created an object which is named receiver. The action is to simply take the OSC message and display it in the post window. And it's only going to respond to OSC messages that have the address slash test. So if we go back up here and try this, now if I do this, we should just see 
the message up here. And did I not run this? All right, here's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's working for all of you, it's just that my computer is broken. Uh, I, I don't know, but I can try the loop back. That might be, maybe that'll have a different result. And it does. Okay, so I, you know, whenever I've taught this in the past, the, the fact of the matter is we are on this, this big university network. So there might be some funny business with security or privacy or firewall or, but you're all on Illinois Net too, and, and what I'm doing is working for you. Okay, great. <laughs> so I just look like a, like a lunatic up here. All right. Anyway, this this is this is the this is the OSC def uh, responding to an OSC message received at the language because right? we're sending it to, the port and this, and uh, that's pretty much it. So why don't we? try to make this do something a little more interesting and uh, play a synth. And it is called play and we have arguments for buffer, playback rate, amplitude, and output. And this is still working, I trust. Good. Uh, Let's say like that. All right. And now, whenever we send any OSC message that has the address test, OSC comes in and plays the synth. It's not really doing anything with this 45, but uh, what we can do is put a some sort of playback number here, like three semitones down. And now, if you remember, when we saw this uh, message, right, if we change this OSC def to post it, we can see what's coming in, an array containing two things, the address and the rest of the data. So what we can say is uh, message at one, dot midi ratio. So now, we can pass data in with the message. And it's, as you can probably in, you know, see here, it's, it's very flexible. You could design your receiving object and your sending mechanism however you like. You can pass you know, 50 pieces of data if you really want or more. Uh, and so now you all should, may be able to send uh, make sound by sending me OSC messages from your computers. If you're all on Illinois Net, then you should be able to make a net address called, you know, what you can call it, whatever you like, call it Eli, call it the crazy guy up front. And instead of 127.001, set the IP to be the string 10.193.51.47. I'll, uh, I'll paste that in here. I don't know if I can copy this. I think I can. Nope, I don't know what that was. I think that's the, uh, that's the link to the OSC article I shared earlier. Ah. Oh, okay, it's working. <laughs> Somebody, who was that, was that you? That's really cool. Okay, yeah. Yeah, notice I have not given you amplitude control. I learned my lesson one time. <laughs> yeah, of course I, I can also, I can mess with my OSC def as you are all sending, sending data, so. I could say um, uh, var amp uh, amp equals amp dot clip between zero and 0.5. So this, I think you could still try to send like non-numbers and mess things up, but this way, even if you send like a million, it's gonna get uh, gonna get clipped. And then I can, uh, and so amp is gonna be equal to message at two, and this is gonna be amp. So now you should be able to do stuff like, um, yeah, so now it's quiet. We can go a little louder, I suppose. Yeah, so now you can send really quiet ones. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, you can add additional messages, add additional uh, data to your message. Uh huh. I think this must be something with OSC. It's uh, like it. It. Um, I don't know. I can't tell you specifically, but there there must be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I bet this is I bet this is in here. Like you can like if we actually go through the article, or or just like go to I think there's like uh, if you just Google OSC, there's like a big page which is like all about the OSC specification 1.0 and data types and things like that. So this is the the beginnings of like you know laptop ensemble stuff where one person is I, I think a pretty reasonable structure is to have one person be the server player and their server is booted, and they broadcast their IP address to everyone in the laptop ensemble, and then there's sort of an understanding ahead of time of what kinds of messages you're going to send, what kinds of addresses are expected, and what kind of influence you can have over the sound, and you can have this cool sort of like collaborative group, like drone jam session, of, you know, all sorts of weird and wacky stuff. Yeah, be a fun, uh, fun final project, maybe, you know. Uh, all right, so that's kind of it. Uh, OSC Def has a lot of the same Features as MIDI def, you can, for example, make them permanent by saying dot permanent underscore true or false. Uh, by default, they're not permanent, so command period will destroy them, which is probably what I want in this situation in case things get a little out of control. All of you getting very enthusiastic with your with your messages. Uh, and um, oh, and then we also have debug mode, right? We had OSC uh, MIDI MIDI funk dot trace true or false, and this will just print every OSC message that comes in. And this is also a nice reminder that the, um, the server and language are constantly in communication with OSC. I'm not sure what is constantly sending status messages to the server, but the server is constantly sending these status reply messages back uh, with a bunch of data, which is like, here's, here's my current status. And if you look carefully, you'll see that the, the numbers uh, here in this message correspond to the numbers down here. So this is the address of the message. The one I think is is nothing. I think it's just like a a thing. I, I think it has no meaning. Uh, zero is the number of eugens, the number of synths, the number of groups, the number of synth defs currently on the server. Uh, this is I think average and peak CPU, the sample rate, and then this is like the actual sample rate because there's like a little bit of micro drift for some reason. And I think this is in server command reference as well. If we look at dot reply, yeah, the first thing is unused. It's always, in, it's always the number one. I, <laughs> I don't know. It might have been just easier to just, uh, you know, have it be unused and delete it and mess things up. Yeah, unit generators, synth groups, synth defs. Average and peak CPU, nominal sample rate, and actual sample rate. Okay? That's the basics of uh, sending and receiving OSC language to language. Let's, let's move on. I want to introduce um, an app for Android and iOS called TouchOSC. Has anyone messed around with TouchOSC before? All right. So the the original version is uh, like version 1.0 or uh, still around. I think it's five bucks on, on the uh, App Store, Android Store. And I think there is a newer version. It's like called the Mark II. And I'm not sure how different or similar it is. I'm still using the Mark I because that's what I'm accustomed to. And I think it's worth, worth a purchase if you want to like turn your smartphone or something into like a little custom controller because it, you can kind of design it to do whatever you really want. You know, you're not limited to MIDI or anything like that. Uh, so the way TouchOSC works is uh, I've got my, my iPad here and just got to unlock things real quick. So here's TouchOSC down in my dock. And it comes with a bunch of default layouts like these really crazy ones. So I'm just clicking layout, picking one of these, and then in the upper right corner hitting done. Anyway, it's great. It doesn't do anything. It's, it's sending OSC. The little green light in the upper right corner is indicating that OSC is being sent. Um, but nothing's really listening to it right now. And you'll also want to go to this OSC connection spot at the top. And you'll want to make sure that the host IP address and port 
are correct based on what you're trying to do. And if I'm trying to send OSE to my computer in the super collider language, then that's what these numbers need to be. 5147, was that right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, so we'll get out of here. And the way we make custom uh, interfaces in TouchOSC is we first use a desktop app called uh, TouchOSC Editor. My computer is doing so many things right now. It is, the fan is on and it's getting a little laggy, but I think we'll survive. All right, touch with the editor. I think it's still launching, maybe. Something should pop up. Maybe not. Where are you, Touch OSC Editor? Lovely. So I'm going to design an interfa uh, interface for my iPad. So I'm going to pick the iPad layout, make it a little smaller. Let's do horizontal because my iPad is currently horizontal. And normally when I teach this lecture, I'm kind of doing buttons and knobs and things which are all pretty easy to figure out. Uh, today, I would like to make a grid. So we'll do a multi-push and uh, we will have the range be, uh, do four by five and we can bring this over here and we'll make it uh, 750 by 600. I think that turns them into squares because what these the proportions here are the same as the proportions here. So this is all fine. We will save this as um, grid 2022. And you want to save this in your layouts folder, which is like you go into the touch OSC application folder and in there with the application, there's also a folder called layouts. Um, it should, it should find this folder automatically. So I think this is where we, where we, where um, touch OSC looks. So we'll save it here. And also take note here in this little section over here where it says OSC auto. This is the base address of this object. So it's going to send messages with an address of slash one slash multi push one. You can customize this if you want, um, but we'll just leave it as is. And so now with the interface saved, we're going to synchronize these two devices. So we hit sync and uh, it says, make sure your device is on the same network, open touch OSC and navigate to layout add, and then select this machine's name from the list to load or download the layout. So I'm going to go to layout and then at the top we see add and I don't see my uh, host here. This is, I've seen this, this happens kind of a lot. So we go to edit, we hit the plus in the corner and then we'll just enter the IP address manually. I think it was 5147 or was it 4751? 5147. 5147. Okay. And then it says downloading and now it has grid 2022 and then we hit done in the corner and there it is. Awesome. So I can uh, hide this temporarily, stop sync and let's quit touch OSC editor. 
Uh, yeah, it's fine. All right. So now if we just uh, go into debug mode here, we can, uh, we should quit the server so we don't get, uh, you get you know, bogged down with all these other messages here. So just pushing buttons here, They're all coming in. And let's just take a look at, I'm just gonna hold one of these buttons down. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna float this on top so that we can see this while I'm pushing it. I mean, so I'll push the bottom left and this sends a message slash one slash multi push one slash one slash one. Right. We release it, same address, but instead of a value of one, we got a value of zero. So value of one went on, zero went off. This one over here is multi push one slash two slash one and three and four. This is uh, one slash two, two slash two. Now this is a design feature that I'm not crazy about because it, instead of treating the whole object as just having one OSC message and sending 20 pieces of data on that message, it treats each individual push as having its own unique OSC address. And that means we're gonna have to make a unique OSC def for each one of these. But we can get clever with iteration and a few other math tricks and condense it into a very small amount of code. I mean, yes, you could actually copy and paste 20 OSC depths and change the address for each one, and that would work, but we can, we can do better, right? We can, uh, and, and the reason it's, it's sort of this weird number is because, the, you know, why, why it starts at one, one down here and four, five in the corner is because it still is imagining a vertical layout, even though it's, it's just imagine, just turn your head 90 degrees and you'll be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> you rotate it, so like this, this is the top right here. This is the left side. This is the right side. It's a little, it's a little silly, but all right. So let's, uh, let's see what's next. We'll, we'll, we'll false this. And let's make these OSC responders. Okay. So we'll say 20 dot collect or 20 dot do is probably fine. Also, uh, and we're gonna say OSC def. And we need a unique name for each one of these because if we just put, you know, receiver, all 20 are gonna be named receiver and each one is gonna overwrite the one behind it. So what we can do is declare an argument here and say this is gonna be called receiver. Uh, well, here's, I, think, I think there might be a faster way to do this, but I usually do it like this. and then take the whole thing as symbol. It might be that strings are fine here, but I'm accustomed to putting symbols for OSC def names, so that's what we're gonna do. We have the, the word, the, the string receiver concatenated with the iteration count, so it's gonna be zero, then one, then two, and then we take the whole string and turn it into a symbol. Then we have our function which is gonna be, uh, I wanna pull in the actual message and the value is gonna be message at one because these, these messages have two things, just the address and the value. And then, uh, you know, for now, let's just, let's just post this. We'll come back to this in just a second. And then the, the kind of tricky part here, because we need the, the path. And this is always gonna start with uh, slash one slash multi push one slash more stuff, right? So what we wanna do is take this sequence of numbers zero through 19 and produce one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, uh, one, five. 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, right? And uh, there's different ways you can do this, but I'm gonna take, make a new line up here. And we're gonna do a, we'll do it sort of step by step. So if we do this, we just get our wonderful, glorious uh, numbers, right? One through 19. So we can use uh, div and mod basically to do this, like division and then take only the, um, the whole number division and mod, which is division and then take only the remainder. So 
if we say um, n mod 5. This, we can say mod like this just for consistency with div by post ln. That gives us 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? Because what we're doing here is we're saying um, uh, this number uh, divided by 5, but give me only the remainder. And we want to uh, add 1 to this. So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have the, the part of the message that's uh, at the very end that go up to 5. And now we just need, uh, with each of these, to pair the number 1, and with each of these to pair the number 2, and each of these to pair the number 3, etc. And that we can do. I think with n div 5. I think we need plus button, plus one. Let's do it this way anyway. Yeah. So this says take the iteration count divided by 5, but give me only the number of times the division occurs with a whole number. And so with 0 through 4, you know, we get 0 with some remainder. And then for 5 through 9, we get 1 with some remainder. So we do need to, we do need to add 1 here, because that then gives us uh, 5 1s, 5 2s, 5 3s, 5 4s. So a little bit of math gymnastics here. Um, and I, I, this is all, I think, kind of a result of Touch OSC being designed this way, where every button has a unique address that's kind of numerically generated. There might be a more clever way to do this. And um, if there is, I'd love to know what it is. <laughs> All right, so here we're going to say uh, this value as string. We need a slash in the middle. And then this value at the end as string. And I think that is the entire message. Yeah, there's no slash at the end. So as we iterate over these 20 numbers, oh, you know what? I'm using i, and it's supposed to be, I'm, I'm using n, and it's supposed to be i. I'm getting confused here. This should be i, i. So that should be good. And all of these should just uh, post their message. And right now, uh, nothing is being posted. And we run this. Everything, should, okay, I forgot something. Plus plus after the slash. Well done. So now we see something, and we see something, and we see something. Right? So I think it's all working. And then we want to do something interesting, right? Make a sound. Don't just post the message, but we'll say if message at one equals one. And we want this to be the case because if we don't filter out the off messages, then it's going to make a sound when we press and when we release, because both of those are an OSC message. We want to say only play a sound if it's a one, meaning only play a sound if we press a button. So if message is a one, we will say, uh, we'll grab this. Uh, amp will be 0.2, and the rate will be, I guess let's make a little like keyboard synth kind of thing. For simplicity, we'll make it chromatic. I know it's a little bit less exciting than diatonic, and who, who knows? Uh, so we can, just, we can just use the iteration count, right, i, which is going to be 0 through 19. So let's say... Um, uh, 19 minus, uh, no, let's do uh, i minus 19. So I think this will give us, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll uh, one of them, the, the very last one will be the original pitch and everything else will be lower. Uh, and we need to say MIDI, MIDI ratio. All right, that seems 
reasonable. And again, the beauty of OSC defs is that uh, if the keys are, you know, if there's a repeat key, it's just going to overwrite the old one, which means we can run this code as often as we want, and we're not going to be creating duplicate OSC defs. And oh, the server is off. <laughs> of course. Of course. So we're going to have to boot this and load the buffer again. I think we do that just in case. Okay, good, making some sound. And here's our OSC defs. And now we should be good to just kind of play around. Hooray! <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's considerably easier uh, without the grid, if you're just if you want to make a bunch of individual buttons, you can you can name you can you can make them send OSC addresses however you like. I think uh, you're sort of stuck with this scheme for the multi-push grids and things like that. And there's a lot of other interesting objects in Touch OSC. There's uh, there's the same grid, but they are toggles. So you if you press and release, the button stays on. Press and release, the button goes off. Um, yeah, lots of other fun, fun things. You can just kind of poke around the, um, oh, is it, is it multi-touch? Of course, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is, uh, it's a multi-touch, kind of the whole point, right? Um, with the mouse, you can only click one thing at a time. But with a, you know, an iPad or something like that, you can. Responsive, too. There's, you're seeing latency on the screen because I think QuickTime is is working because it's also recording my screen at the same time that it's also displaying the iPad screen. So, um, and quite frankly, I should probably give my computer a break. <laughs> I don't, don't want to have it be running in this state for too long. Uh, but I um, are are there any any questions or follow ups? Sort of, how would you do this? How would you do that? Yes. So just to backtrack, Touch OSC is an app that you download onto your device. Yes, Touch OSC is an app that runs on iOS and Android, and that's where you actually interface with your, with your interfaces. Uh, but then there's also TouchOSC Editor, which is a free desktop program, which is where you design your interfaces, and then you sync them to your device, and then it pulls all of the, it just basically looks at your layouts folder, it pulls them all in. Yeah, um, there's another app called Lemur, which is considerably more expensive, but has a lot more features and different objects. Like there's a, there's a multi-ball uh, object where there's like some number of balls that you can click and drag around and they have like physics and stuff like that. Uh, and, and that you can actually build the interfaces in the app. Um, and, but it's the same idea, it sends OSC and you just gotta give it the IP address and port of whatever is supposed to be listening to it. And, and then if you're using SuperCloud, you just designed a bunch of OSC defs to respond to those OSC messages. Good question. Uh, is this similar to my light matrix instrument? No, not at all. Uh, well, no, not really. It's a different protocol. That that device uh, is connected to it. The sensors are connected to an Arduino, which uh, digitizes the voltages and then sends them over a USB cable into my computer. So in SuperCollider, I'm using uh, an object called serial port. Which is a which is a class. Of, it's an object that listens, reads from, and writes data to one of your serial ports, like a USB port or something. So there's actually no OSC involved in that project. It's just, um, yeah, just serial communication. Yes. How do I? So if you create something, you mean like one of these interfaces? How do you? Did you say record it? Yeah, like record it in Yeah, well, you can record, like record the audio? Oh, so record everything. Well, recording the audio is pretty simple. You would record it just like you record any other audio in Super Collider. Um, the, the way I usually tell people to do it is to say s.make GUI, and then just click record, and then start making sound. And when you're done, click the record button again, and that writes an AIF file to your Super Collider recordings directory. And it's just everything you heard on buses 0 and 1 coming out of left and right speakers, 
is, is written to an audio file. Capturing the, the, the actual hand motions is not something that, I, it, if, it, if it can be done, it's very difficult. It's, it's about as difficult as capturing someone's finger motions on a grand piano. I mean, how do you record that? I mean, how do you, you have to have some, I, I don't know, right? That's a, that's a difficult question. It's not really, touch OC is not really something designed to record and play back physical interactions. It's like a musical instrument where it's like spontaneous in the moment. You're just, you're just playing it like an instrument. So I, I think it's probably almost, you know, not worth it trying to, trying to record that. But the, recording the audio is pretty easy. Yes? Yeah, so, so let's, supposing you um, write a piece in Super Collider involving one of these controllers and you want to send it to a performer. Uh, well, they, they would need to use your iPad or their own and you'd send them your TouchOSC layout file and you'd tell them to put it in their layouts folder and then sync it with their computer. That would get it onto their, their mobile device. And then you'd send them their code. And if you write your code well and robustly, then they should be able to run it and you know, I mean, you might have to like have them put their own IP address at the top of the code. Uh, but basically, you know, it'd be like any other collaboration where you just have to sort of communicate and work with them and, and say, is everything working? Is it, did anything not work? And, you know, just if they run into problems, just, you know, help them out as best you can. Good. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to end class here, even though we're a little bit before 350, but uh, I fear for my computer's well-being. <laughs> okay, so here's the plan. Uh, next week we have fall break. Enjoy the fall break, no class. And then we have one more class on Thursday after fall break. On that day, I'm not really going to prepare anything. Instead, I'm going to ask all of you to have put some thought and work towards your final projects. And please come with questions and, and thoughts. How do I do this? This is broken. What am I doing wrong? Uh, how can I make this sound more interesting? Stuff like that, and we'll we'll kind of do a group, a group lesson, and um, uh, we'll see how it goes. Right. So, have a great break, and um, I'll see you after. <laughs>